This mechanical ornithopter runs entirely on the gas from a single CO2 cartridge, powered by a custom-built twin-cylinder engine, planetary gears, and a web of linkages that are all working together to hopefully lug this mechanical bird into the sky. This build pushed the limits of what I thought was possible to create from my basement workshop. To catch everyone up to speed, an ornithopter is a machine that can fly by flapping its wings like a bird. But it's been my goal since the beginning to make an ornithopter that can fly vertically or hover like a hummingbird. In my first attempt, I got it to fly, but not without the help of some thrusters and an endless supply of air. Flight was definitely a loose term. The plan this time is to build an engine that is powerful enough to lift itself, the weight of the air supply, and efficient enough to stay airborne for at least a few seconds before something breaks. And like last time, my goal is to do this 100% mechanically, no electronics. For the first version, I built a tiny rotary vane motor to harness the compressed air. One of the main issues I had with this was the efficiency. Because it's a spinning rotor with vanes, there are a lot of faces that need to be sealed to keep the gas from flowing right out. And that's why I'm taking notes from one of YouTube's experts in air engines, Tom Stanton. Tom has been building air engines for years now, honing in on making the most powerful and most efficient design possible. So I'm going to learn from all the work he's done and adjust it for my ornithopter. Our engine of choice is a piston engine, working like an internal combustion engine, where a piston is moved up and down in a cylinder with a rod connecting it to a crank, providing rotation. Where the engine differs, of course, is the energy supply is compressed air or gas. In order to allow the gas to enter the cylinder, Tom's design uses a pin on top of a piston. And as the piston reaches the top of its stroke, the pin pushes a ball off of a seal, letting gas fill the cylinder and push the piston back down. But this is where the design does something unique. To seal the piston in the cylinder, an O-ring is used. But the O-ring is actually designed to allow air to pass by it. Only when higher pressure air is allowed into the cylinder, the o-ring expands, creating an airtight seal. Then at the bottom of the piston stroke, the o-ring passes by open ports, allowing the air to escape and the o-ring to return to normal size. This works great, but the one thing I noticed right away is the need for a flywheel. Because the piston is also the timing of the valve, the ball inherently has to be pushed off the seal before the top of its stroke. And so without enough momentum in the system, the air will overpower the flywheel and cause the engine to backfire in this endless loop. This works great when using a propeller because it acts as the flywheel, but when rotating oscillating wings that change direction, there isn't much besides the engine's own mass to keep it going. The key would be to time the valve opening when we want it to, ideally right at the top of the stroke or right after, so that the engine can't backfire and could potentially run with no flywheel at all. And after a brief look at using a steam engine design, I realized that the ball valve from Tom's engine offered the simplest solution to the system. With this in mind, I simply moved the ball valve over and added a cam-driven push rod to the crankshaft. Now, with the right cam profile, we can not only open the valve whenever we want, but keep it open for as long as we need to. This does add a little more weight, but I think the weight we will save by not having a heavy flywheel will be worth it. With that working, I've redesigned a few parts. The crankcase and crankshaft remain as one unit, but the cylinder and valve system will be removable to make assembly and testing easier. And by adding a second cylinder to the opposing side, we should be able to double our power. This project is going to take a lot of prototyping, and I couldn't be happier to have Bamboo Labs H2D running tandem with my old X1 Carbon. 
And I may be biased here because Bamboo is sponsoring this video, but this printer is the most advanced piece of equipment I own. And that might not mean much if you've seen my other tools, but this has some features that I now find hard to go without. Automatic intake and exhaust ventilation make it so easy to print from different materials and not have to worry about chamber temperature. And this light progress bar is one of those little touches that really shows how much thought went into this printer. When designing parts for 3D printed projects like these, I often try my best to make things that don't need any support material. Parts print faster and they just look better. But every now and then, an overhang is unavoidable. Fortunately, one of those advanced features of the H2D is this dual nozzle system, allowing me to print with dedicated support material from one and the rest of the part with the other. And as expected, those overhangs are looking great. I've had enough of that bone shaking vibration, so I've added a flywheel after all. Now that's much better. Now of course this whole time we've been testing this on an infinite supply of air. Let's try this out with a fixed volume. You might be familiar with people using these 2 liter soda bottles as air tanks. They can hold almost 120 psi and they're easy to pop in some air fittings and pressurize it. However, as you'll notice, the speed of our engine is determined by the pressure, meaning we don't have any control. Luckily, I don't think we need all 120 psi. The engine seems to be running better at 30 to 40 psi, which means we can pop in an air regulator in between our tank and the engine, allowing us to run it longer at a constant pressure. So we're getting over 30 seconds of runtime at about 4500 RPM. That's great because it means we can tune a gearbox to give us more torque at a higher speed. In this case I'm just guessing but I'm starting with about a 4 to 1 ratio. I get asked a lot about the software that I use and I can't recommend Onchip enough. I'm lucky enough to have them as an ongoing sponsor but knowing what I know now I'd use them even if they weren't. It doesn't crash. It's cloud-based, meaning it runs in a browser. And if you're an engineer, you can use the link in the description to get up to six months of the professional version for free. So because the wings are gonna be directly connected to the motor, I'd rather control what parts flex and what parts shouldn't. So what I'm thinking about is adding sort of a flexible output gear to the motor. This will act as sort of a torque buffer and hopefully stop any parts down the line from breaking. This part is perfect for testing out H2D's multi-material function. The plan is to embed a TPU shaft between the rigid gear and the base. This part would take hours to print on a standard printer, but with the dual nozzle system, it makes printing something like this actually worth my time. And it feels like it could be the perfect amount of flex. Perfect. Now all that's left to make is a linkage to flap the wings. Now last time I only had two wings, but since both wings moved back and forth at the same time, they created an imbalance, constantly shifting that center of mass. This time I'm opting for four wings. This way I can balance the movement by having two wings move one way and the other two move the opposite. Fortunately, I won't have to cut four identical wings because the HTD can do it for me.
Now, if you recall from the thumbnail of this video, I want this thing to run on a CO2 cartridge. But holding close to 850 PSI, we're going to need an extremely lightweight and high pressure regulator. Here's how it works. As the CO2 cartridge is screwed into the bottom, it is punctured, allowing pressure into the system. By adjusting our spring, we can open the valve, but as soon as it is open, pressure pushes on the piston, closing it. This will continue in a feedback loop, only allowing a pressure set by the spring to exit the regulator. There's just one last thing this part needs. Yes, the HDD is also a laser cutter and engraver. This thing is truly becoming my best all-in-one DIY tool. Look at that. That's awesome. This thing is gonna be so cool. Okay, so before we test this thing out, we're gonna do a quick rundown to see how everything works. So we start with this 850 PSI, which is reduced to 150 PSI by this regulator. That 150 PSI is reduced again to 30 to 40 PSI by the second regulator. It is then split to enter each side of each cylinder where the engine uh, produces rotary motion. The gearbox above that will reduce that speed but increase the torque and the wing mechanism on top of all of it will of course flap the wings. And hopefully that all works together, but uh, I guess we'll find out. That's good. Is this optimal flying height? It needs like two twists and then, uh, and then it's gonna start. Oh wow, so slow. Now obviously this thing doesn't fly yet, and that's because after multiple lift attempts, the wings are only producing about 40 grams of thrust. I did try adding a turboprop in place of the flywheel, which got up to 70 grams, but this is sort of cheating. But because the entire assembly weighs over 200 grams, we would need to shave off quite a bit of weight to get this to fly. That being said, we did achieve quite a lot. We successfully built a regulation system that can handle extremely high pressures of the CO2 cartridge, an engine that can run at full power on that air supply for close to 30 seconds, and a balanced wing platform capable of moving a large surface area back and forth over 20 times a second. With this platform as a base, I think reducing weight and increasing the wing lift is only a matter of time. But after moving across the country, I've decided to wrap this project up for now. If you're interested in printing your own, all the files will be available on my Patreon page linked below. I'm not quitting on this dream of mine just yet, so until next time, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, how it could be improved, or just your favorite part about the project. If you like this video and are interested in more projects like this one, don't forget to subscribe. 
because as always, there are more projects in the woods. That's actual speed right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>